Oh. All right. Uh, yeah, maybe you can just, okay, so on the profile page, that is where we're going to have all the information depending on whether the user is the consumer or the farmer which is the seller now. If the person is the farmer, then we are going to have the prediction from the model that was made on the quantity to be produced, the type of farm produce to be made, the one that uh, people actually are buying at that particular season or points period of the year. If it's uh, from the user, I mean, the consumer's end, because I think uh, what we are working on, we work both ways, for both the consumer and also the farmer. The consumer such that the consumer can say, okay, I need five tubers of yam. And then the machine talking about the half can predict and recommend farmers that have that. So it means the consumer also needs to have access to another side of the prediction so that uh, he or she will know what food to he should expect in the market at that particular period of time. Because some of these produce are actually seasonal and in one way or the other, I don't know how robust the system is going to be later, but I'm just thinking if everything works out well, that should be. So that's what we are going to have on the profile page. Like I said before, the bell, here is the notification page in case I have made an order previously and the seller is not online to complete the transaction. The bell is going to tell me, okay, there is a pending information, exactly. Then the search, I can easily search for what I want precisely. Here I'm searching for yam, I'm searching, searching for tomato or avocados or whatever. And still on the search, we can filter our search by location, you can filter by category of the food because uh, I might type something that actually a name of a produce that might fall under different categories. So categories I meant now might be, um, how do I put this now? Uh, maybe cereal, okay? Legume or tuba, or whatever it is. So I can filter my search with that filter also. So like I said earlier, on the landing page, we just have all of the produce in the market for so sale. Then we can check recommendation, which would be um, the result of the AI, the smartness of the application now, the recommendation, which is going to be based on maybe location or the people around my location, the season, and all of that. Then recent searches is a third column there. Recent searches would be my previous searches. Okay, for the past few weeks, I've been looking to buy tomatoes. So those would be under my recent searches. And maybe I chatted with a seller recently. I can get it under recent searches too. So in, on each of those pages, I'm going to have my produce, the price, the name. And by clicking on any of the produce, it's going to take me to the detail page. Uh, I think it's, uh, maybe you can scroll back a little bit more please okay this page exactly so on this is the item detail page. once i click on the item i want to buy it's going to tell me the name the price the quantity and part of the detail that is here under the price and the quantity will be the location of the buyer the name of the buyer every information i need to get as regarding the produce can you scroll up for it a little when you scroll this page, oh, okay, I think it should be backward a little bit more. Okay, when you scroll, oh, exactly, when you scroll up this page, you're going to see the chat. You can chat directly with the seller or the farmer and share information on how you want to buy it or whatever or ask for more information. Then add to cart. That's the second icon there. You can easily, the moment you think you are okay with it without even asking for any other further information, you can just add it to cart, which will be added to the icon at the top here directly. And from that cart, you can go on with the purchase and check out. That is how far I have gone. Thank you. Wow. Amazing.
Nice one. I mean, for just, um, I mean, we, I just spoke with Ami Larry, like, um, was that, how, what time was that in the afternoon, right? Yes, and, that's like, answer. Yeah. And I mean, within that short time frame, you've already come up with this. I think it's amazing. Like, it's, the response is just really, really sweet. Superb and impressive. So, guys, what do you think? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, my, my, I have some things to say. Yeah. Okay, uh, first of all, Dami Larry, I love your user interface. The, the user interface you created is actually very, very nice it's, and is understandable. Um, you said something that. Um, during the registration, the person will have to choose either to be a buyer or a seller. So my question is, what if the person wants to do both, both buying and selling? Is there, mm -hmm. uh, like, is it, is it possible for the person to split the, the two distinct options at the same time? It, it is possible, but uh, just like you raised it, I think it's a point we need to look into. Um, we can make it something like Gigi. On Gigi, everybody logs in as okay, a user. Okay, okay, so okay, if you want yeah. to sell, you sell. If you want to you buy, sell, yeah, you yeah. buy. I, exactly. I think that's, that one is better. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that like, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. I have something to say on that though. Okay. On the GG model now. Okay, so if we are, we are following that model, how do we now, how do we make recommendations? What's the distinction between a consumer and a farmer? You know, what we're working with is as like an AI, okay? The AI needs to be feed, you need to feed it with features. This is what I want, this is what I want. So how do we distinguish between a user and a farmer if we are just all in the lord we are working for the lord how 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 do we know the pastor and the, you know? the congregation <laughs> okay i i think uh, what that will be the recommendation will be based on the produce like uh, marilyn mentioned she said you are still working on cassava for now. It means if I am selling cassava as a farmer, I have access to data on farmer, on, on cassava rather. And if I am buying cassava, I have access to the data on cassava as a buyer, not as a seller. So it means the data will be, I don't know how possible that's, but I am thinking that the data will be based on the produce, the, the product that's in the market for sale. If I am selling cassava, it's most unlikely that I am buying cassava at the same time. If I am buying yam, it's most unlikely I'm selling yam at the same time. So if I am selling yam, I will have access to seller's data on yam. If I am buying yam, I will have access to buyer's data on yam. Have I answered your question, Isaac? <laughs> I, yes, yes, of course, you've answered the question, but I don't know how, how to implement that. I'm, I'm thinking of how do we implement that. Will it be that once the, users, once the user signs in, you will pick the produce you're looking for, maybe the, I'm, I'm looking for cassava now. Then that sends it to the back end. What, how, how, how do we go about that? Um, sorry, I have a suggestion. Okay. Why not we do this way? We, we create an interface icon that will read um, transaction. Once someone clicks it, the person will not have to select whether he's a buyer or a seller. But this will be when the person wants to do any transaction. Or during registration, everybody registers as a normal user. But whenever someone wants to uh, do transaction, the person will click the transaction icon. 
not take the person to a page where the person will now choose whether he's a buyer or a seller. Um, depending on whatever the person chooses, it will now redirect the person to another page based on what he or she selected. Dami, do you understand what I just said now? I do. Oh, yeah. That is my suggestion. I, I don't know if you have, whether you have a better understanding. I think it's a great idea. But Isaac, how do you think we can resolve this conflict of farmer and consumer? No, what, what is do your thing? that idea I, is? Okay. Yes, but you know, there's this law. I don't know if it's a law, sure. Let me just, <laughs> but there's this rule. There's this rule by, about UX, like user experience. The, the lesser the number of pages we have, the more interactive it becomes. So when, once that, once you start having more and more pages, people get tired feel this feel this feel this but well, that is just a button so that should work so after that button it, it should be a button just form immediately just bring out the form once you click on transaction it bring it brings up the form um are you a seller or a buyer once you click that then it takes you to the next thing so that's like one two three 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 actions which is which is still under under the normal normal or something but when someone clicks on a transaction, doesn't that mean that they want to buy the... It can go both ways. The seller is still performing a transaction as well. I want to sell. It's still a transaction. I want to buy. It's still a transaction. So, uh, well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, just the way EE they work, I mean, you can on the platform and there's this option to sell something and of course to buy as well so mm. at any point you can be either of them and yes. i'm just like i mean regarding the the prediction model aspect like the food demand prediction because that information is supposed to be available to the person selling you know, or the farmer, mm -hmm. you know, okay. give them a forecast of what the coming year would, or yeah, coming season would look like uh, for that particular product. So I think that, you know, there was something that Malara said that it could be on, like we can narrow it down to the product level. So for, for a product that someone is, a, is selling, they will be able to see the, that uh, statistic. And, you know, for the one they are buying, they would not see. Yeah. So that, mean, that means um, the recommender system will work for buying, the prediction system will work for selling. So the recommender system should work for both buying and selling. Like it should, it is a matching. So anyway, it's, it's, I get what you, so it's like, um, it's so the person that has the demand and money to pay for something that is like, you know, you're taking that person to meet the, the person who has what they need. So it's going to, but it's still matching um, one to the other, you know. Mm. But I don't think that you want to match farmers. In a way, it's like you match them. So they would anyway, the, the consumer would have, or the, the buyer would have, you know, like, um, sort of that. And so when do we recommend farmers to farmers? Oh, okay, 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 I get it now. So we recommend, I know, you know, but farmers are not the ones to push uh, like buy buy thing. <laughs> How do I put it? Yeah, up? that's why you are you're matching. So a consumer would have, you know, based on their behavior and their um, also the farmer's information, the consumer um, could have like a list of five farmers they can mm -hmm. buy from. Yes, and that's they it. Have, they will now choose. So it's like a clustering. 
you do some kind okay. of cross stream based on some similarity measures and then you can have like a uh, consumer uh, ma be matched to let's say a group of farmer and then they can then choose who to um, buy from so on like the other way around where let's say a farmer uh, is being matched to let's say five consumers so mm -hmm. uh, yeah i mean i think it's it's more of the other way around where the if a consumer has uh, and so i'm thinking of it this way like um you know a consumer has fixed a particular demand like that's where it starts from okay these farmers they've listed their what they have so a consumer really has to initiate initiate the transaction like this is what i want and then you know it's like uh, what happens when you go to uh, the airport you know when you come out and you just see all these taxi drivers clustering around you like come or even in the market you like you have all this cluster of people like oh come and buy from me come and buy from me and stuff like that and then you just have to like choose who you buy from hey, hey that, that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. like looking at this from from a broader perspective now the recommender system is targeted um, towards the drive, uh, I said driver, <laughs> so towards the farmers from the consumer's perspective. The machine is recommending the right farmer to the consumer. Now, the prediction the, or the, predict, the predictive model is targeted towards the consumer from the farmer's perspective. So, the predictive model is telling the farmer, okay, this is what they've been buying. So I guess they will buy more of this in so, so, so years. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah, they'll buy more of this and this is how much you should produce. Use, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This is how much you should produce. That's, is, that, is, that, is that like a recommender system inside the predictive model? That is the or predictive part that tells them how much they should produce. So that's where they want to avoid wastage. You yeah, know, because, yeah. you know, by that, call it intelligence. So it's that intelligence they get about the, the future, they would know, okay, um, how much resources they need to put into, uh, they need to invest into producing. Because, mm -hmm. you know, once you have, like, invested that resource and you've produced, you know, you have to think of storage and all that. And that's where wastage comes in when you don't have, like when your supply is more than the demand, you know. So um, that is the intelligence that this system should supply to them. I, like the profit they need, tell them, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I prophesy that you would produce 1,000 to birth next year. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I think that when you compare it, I'm always using dating app. I don't know why, because, you know, like that's one recommender system that I've seen the way it works. So yeah. you, if you want to compare it to the dating app recommender system, the difference there is that in dating app, you have two people that really want the same thing. Like, I don't know, not really. Well. You have two people, they are looking for the same thing. Or, so they both are looking to find a mate, right? Mm -hmm. Unlike here, the farmer uh, just w wants to sell, the buyer wants to, to buy. So they are looking for sort of different things, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, an exchange. But in the case of a dating app, so that's why in a dating app, you could have, you know, more of. You want to find out the profile of one person to see how it fits uh, the other person. So you sort of do a clustering to, um, you know, recommend, um, you know, at, at the, for the consumer at the end of it, probably the person just wants to select one person for that particular produce. But in the dating app, obviously you want to select at the end of it, the one person, but it, should, it will recommend, let's say, 10 people to you and you may interact with those 10 and end up just choosing one at the end of the year. So that's yeah. what's the way. Yeah. 
I want to suggest that um, we can help this situation by giving the user to select, because I'm thinking this way, at what point do we actually know if the person logging in the user is coming in to sell or to buy? Because I think that will determine, just like the dating app you mentioned, because uh, in dating app, the recommender system they use actually cross a lot of things. It checks the Facebook profile of that person and think, okay, from Facebook profile, I can see that this is what the person likes. And so the suggestion has been made. Now, I think Tinder as an example, we will not suggest a guy to me because I'm a guy because and I'm not a gay. Hmm. So at one point or the other, it means the system was able to actually recognize me as somebody looking for a lady. Mm -hmm. And I think I must have done that by filling out the form. Yeah. Plus the fact that the system is a smart system, it's an intelligent system. So I think this can also be transferred here. There should be a point when the user actually gets to say, okay, this is what I want. I want to buy yam. And so the system can now recommend sellers on that information. I want to sell yam. The system can now say, okay, you want to sell yam. This is what is happening if you are a seller. This is what is going to happen in the next five years. This is the number of products, I mean, produce you should make available for sale in this social number of years. I mean, the, the thing is, it, it's not that you, I mean, this question came up. I was actually just looking at them as two different, like di two distinct users of the system. So there is a farmer with the farmer profile and a, um, a consumer with a consumer profile, you know, because mm -hmm. the offerings, you know, that intelligence, it's more like, because you know, the farmer would have like, yeah, um, profile and they have access to that intelligence so it's sort of easier to really make such offering to them that was how i was looking at it but i, I you know looking at this question i also realized that a farmer might want to buy something and so, yeah so i think that we have to look at uh, you know how to, to sort this out but maybe we focus now on what do we need? Because we just have one week. To... That's what I want to say. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> These are like no future, bad, future. Mm. Yeah. So we can just focus, narrow down our discussion to what we want to see, like what we, what can be done within one week. And I think that, uh,